Hey guys, and welcome to another video. In this video here, I'm riding with my club and we're heading to West Head, which is a fantastic ride to the northern side of Sydney to Karinga Chase National Park. This is late May, and the topic of this video is gonna be talking about what to wear in winter during in cycling. And Sydney is a little bit tricky because for like 80 to 90% of the year, you actually don't need winter gear at all. In fact, you can get away with wearing almost summer kit. Uh, but there's like small part of the year where it is freezing cold, at least to my standards. And this was one of the days here. So even though it's late May, we're experiencing some early winter weather and the start of the ride was eight degrees. I'm gonna put the Fahrenheit up on the screen here cause I can't do the conversion in my head. But this is the first time in 2024 where I've actually had to bring out my long finger gloves. I managed to get quite a lot of good footage during this ride so I can't wait to show you guys that. So why don't you come along with me and we'll chat about some winter gear later in the video. Before I go into my three cardinal rules of dressing for winter in Sydney, what I want to talk about first is a bit of context because the temperature variability when you ride in Sydney is crazy. Like I said, the start of this ride was 8 degrees, but it was going to warm up to over 20 degrees by probably around the end of the ride. But then at the same time, when you go down to Scents and you're in the valleys, for example, to Coona Bay, it can be easily in the single digits, low single digits. On top of that, it's really hard to justify buying thermal winter kit in Sydney when you could probably only use it maybe about four or five times a year. Uh, when I was a new cyclist, I actually bought thermal bib tights and I think I can count on one hand the amount of times I've used that over the past four years. So a theme that you're gonna see a lot in this video is gonna talk about layering and bring stuff on the ride that you can put on and take off as you need. All right, so my first rule is below 16 degrees. That's when I start considering arm warmers. And if I have to, sometimes I wear just a long sleeve uh, jersey. I found those are really good. But usually arm warmers are great because you can just keep them on at the side of the ride, take them off when you need to, stow them in the back pocket, or you can even tie them around your handlebars. All right, when it gets around 12 or 10 degrees, that's when I like to spring out some of the more heavy duty stuff. I love a neck warmer. Neck warmers are fantastic. When you're going down to the scent, you can roll it up and put it over your nose and your mouth and your ears to keep those extremities warm. You can even take it off while you're riding because a lot of them are quite elastic -y and you can pull it over your helmet. And then they're really easy just to stuff in the pocket. This is also when I'll definitely start bringing a gilet. I feel like gilets are in a bit of a weird spot because some of them are trying to be waterproof, which means that they really like trap your sweat in and make you feel really sticky. Whilst if you get like one of those winter ones, they're much more thick, but which means when you go to take it off and stow in your pocket, you can almost not even fit it in there. Uh, on top of that, if you have it unzipped, it's like wearing like a bloody carpet on the back. So I haven't really found a gilet that I'm 100% happy with. That being said, I only have two. Uh, I've got a map like waterproof gilet and then I have a pedal mafia more stick one. One of my main criteria for a gilet though is that it needs to have pockets. So <laughs> that's just one of my things that I like looking out for. Below 10 degrees is also where I'm definitely gonna be wearing my long finger gloves. I hate having cold fingers and there's nothing worse than going down to descent when you can't even feel anything or feel your levers and your brakes. And below five degrees, that's where I'm pulling out all the stops. This is my number one tip, which I'm gonna give you right away, which is to wear double socks. So you can even wear a pair of ankle socks on top of your normal socks. Uh, and I think this works really well. Or uh, toe covers work fantastic as well. The ones I like using are the Velo Toes ones, just the toe covers, not the whole foot cover, which I find a bit inconvenient to use. You can also consider knee warmers. I have a couple pair of these. I don't find myself using them that often because they're almost impossible to take off while you're riding uh, compared to arm warmers, but they are good in a pinch. Some of the footage in this video is a little bit scuffed and that's because, like I said, it's the first time I've been using my gloves this winter and I have been using used to using them with the touch screen of my GoPro, my camera that I use, and I inadvertently changed all my settings while I was riding, and that's why some of the footage looks a bit oh, all over the place. I changed the frame rate, the ISO, literally everything that could be changed, I changed by accident. Uh, halfway through the ride, I realized that I'd messed all the settings up and I managed to fix it for only a little bit of the rest of the ride. 
Anyway, I've been talking for long enough and we've just arrived at the West Head Lookout, which is newly renovated. They've put new guardrails in, a new lookout. It looks fantastic. If you live in Sydney and you haven't made your way out there, you need to check it out because look at this view. All that's left to do in this ride is get a coffee, hopefully there's some fresh muffins at the cafe, and find a nice seat in the sun. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it's helpful for you in dressing for winter riding here in Sydney, or maybe you're somewhere else in Australia where these are similar conditions. Why don't you let me know in the comments below what you think about what I've said. I know that cycling fashion and clothing is very, very subjective, but maybe you've got some similar rules to what I've said in this, or maybe you've got completely different ones. So I wanna hear about it, let me know below. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do. It will help me out a lot. I've got an ambitious goal of 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And if you can assist with that, it'll be much appreciated. All right, guys, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.